Thank you very much. Now I'm going to struggle with that. <laughs> but um, so our next presentation um, is going to be from <coughs> uh, Ability Links, uh, which is a state government funded service that actually provides assistance for people with a range of disabilities, including psychosocial disability, to engage in social um, activities and recreational activities <coughs> in the community. What's so important is that you don't have to have an NDIS package to get this. So um, there's lots of people who um, are not going to be able to get into the NDIS who will still be able to access this, these excellent kinds of services. So now I'm going to have a go. Um, <laughs> our presenter today will be Ifi Ugabu. Um, if he is a Bachelor of Disability Studies and Inclusion from the Australian Catholic University, she joined St Vincent de Paul Society in 2016, working with Ability Links New South Wales. In the past, if he has worked as an air hostess in the aviation industry uh, and a customer service officer in the banking industry, although originally from Nigeria. Uh, uh, if he has lived in Australia since September 2012 um, and she loves dancing and listening to music which is very good for a recreational service of this kind. So I'd like um, if you to come forward and to correct my pronunciation and also to um, give us a presentation about Ability Links. Hi everyone, my name is Ifu Hebu. I'm here to give you a presentation on ability links on what we do. Okay. So we work with people with disability and mental health between the ages of 7 and 64 years, their families and carers to be active and valuable members of the community. And we provide this support by placing them at the middle of um, our decision making. So assessing ability links, uh, we only require the person to identify to have you know, disability or mental health, and we don't need any form of assessment or proof of medical condition to be able to you know, assess our services. So a person with disability who is looking to make more you know, community connection can come to us and we'll discuss with the person his or her goals and interests and then we can explore them together and know how to work towards them. And um, people can contact you know, Ability Links directly. We even encourage people to contact us directly. You can do that through phone, or you can send us an email. You can even walk down into our office or be referred to, uh, referred to us by any other service. So initially, the whole idea was you know, to focus on people who are not traditionally known to the disability services sector. But now we work with both people who are assessing the disability service and the ones that are not assessing the disability service. And our program is very flexible in that people can opt in and opt out at any time. Like someone can come to us looking for a support and after a week the person is like, I just I wanna go away, I wanna travel. You know, you can the person can stop the subsidy support and then come back anytime. So we are not, you know, very strict, we are very, very flexible. And Anyone working with us can choose their link out based on the age, um, gender, background, or um, cultural background. For example, the person might prefer to work with an older linker, or the person might prefer to work with a younger linker, and some people might prefer to work with a male linker, while some might prefer female linkers, maybe due, due to past experience. While some people might prefer to work with someone with a um, Christian background or non-Christian background, and then some people might decide to work with maybe an Aboriginal linker, Chinese, African. You know, we try as much as possible to fit them to you know the type of linker that they want to work with. So for the linker role, we provide locally based points of contact when it comes to you know community connection and also assessing mainstream services. So like I said before, we work together with people to build their confidence to do whatever they want to do with their lives and also to assess supports while needed. So we also work together with the community service to build an, an, um, a welcoming and informed um, community. For example, 
we have some organizations that you know maybe they're looking at making their space to be more accessible so we work together with them to like achieve that so when to assess ability needs you can contact us you know if you have someone that is finding it difficult you know participating or um, finding community activities and also if you have someone that is feeling isolated and depressed and you know who wants to be more engaged in the community and call ability means you can help the person to explore that and also if someone is looking at you know improving his or her existing network of friends and family or if the person wants to create new networks for example we have um, people who have friends and family that they've lost contact with a long time ago and they are actually looking for ways to reconnect with them and they don't really know how to go about it you can come to ability means and then we have people who have list of you know a lot of things that they want to do with their lives but they lack the confidence to be able to achieve that so they come to us we help them to build their confidence to like build that goal and then capacity building um, if the person is looking at um, improving his or her existing skills or learning a new skill for example someone might want to improve his or her computer skills or the person wants to improve the music or the person even wants to go back to school and don't know how to go about it so we work together with them to like enroll them in whatever course they want to do or whatever you know campus or test that they want to attend so these are some of the types of links that we do we can link people to sports and recreational activities we can link people to arts link people to like for some crisis support, housing and tenancy, central link and Medicare, education training for, like I said, TEF, uni, Aboriginal specific support, police and justice for some people that are probably are going through legal problems with their families, with property and all that, drugs and alcohol, and also employment skills like CV, attending interview, all those type of stuff. These are some of the services that we. So now, Ability Links and NDIS, we now work alongside with um, NDIS, so we kind of like assist, assisting them to build, um, to fill in the gaps because they are not really covering up all the areas. So Ability Links can provide information on how to complete the NDIS access checklist and also on how to obtain the access request form. And we all know that it's not everybody that is eligible for NDIS. So for those of them that are not eligible, we can help them to connect with other services in within their community. And then ability list can also work with the NDIS participants who their interests are not fully covered by NDIS. Because some people have a whole lot of interests and goals, but not all of them are covered you know, by NDIS. So we you know, work together with them and then link them to other you know, natural and informal supports where they can also meet their goals. So um, ability link service can also can now be assessed on NDIS you know, homepage, their website. So if you go to the NDIS website, this is their homepage, you'll find you know, how to connect with NDIS. Like here, you can see need someone to help, so connect with an ability link service provider in an area. So you just all you have to do is just type in your postcode where you live and then you search. It will now give you a list of all ability link locations and then you can now you know, call the one that is going to be in need. You can also call this number. And then to find more about Ability Link Service Providers, click here. So this is just to tell you that our services is now in NDIS um, website. So these are some of the examples of people that we work with, um, some of the success stories, and all these people we have their consent to share this story. So this is Diane. Diane was referred to Ability Links by a hospital staff. At first, you know, Diane you know, was, is a very, very quiet woman, very withdrawn. She doesn't really know how, she doesn't really, she can't take decision on her own. Everything you suggest to her is yes, 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 yes. So when we were working with her, we tried to like ask her what her interests are and you know, what does she like doing or what she doesn't like doing. She was just like, yes, anything you call, she said yes. Do you like this? Yes, everything, yes. So. <laughs> We started like working with her, you know, gradually, gradually, you know, trying to build up a rapport. So most times we go to her, we can talk about music and then different types of music. I like hip hop, I don't like hip hop and all those kind of stuff. So we can talk about the weather, we can talk about, um, you know, um, different types of food. We can just raise a topic and we're just like talking and then we go home. Some other time we come back and then gradually, gradually it now clicks. So 
guy was able to, you know, give her own opinion. Then she now said one day, I don't even like some of the food that they cook in this hostel. Mm -hmm. So now <laughs> she now she now knows, you know, what she wants. She can give her own opinion. So right now she now has a list of things that she would like to do, and we are all working together with her to achieve that. So with this, you know, we are happy that she's able to. You know say what she wants she now has her own opinion this was what you know she wasn't doing before everything was yes you like this yes do not you like this yes everything was just like yes so this is diane <laughs> and um so this is julie julie was also initially referred to us um, by a partner organization so she wished to be linked to a variety of activities so that she can have more opportunities to be connected with the community but her physical disability posed a challenge. So she didn't really know how to go about that. So after her surgery, she wanted to sign in for a Spanish course and then also wished to participate in some form of ex gentle exercise to help her mobility. So we were able to you know, discover a local Spanish course around her area and then one of us also you know, enrolled her for the course and we attended with, uh, with her for the first section. And then we also help her to find an adult King Kong, you know, the Chinese gentle exercise that is also available in the local gym. And then Julie also signed up for the class. So after a few weeks of attending the Spanish class and also the um, King Kong um, exercise, she was very happy. So this was the, you know, what she told us. You know, which is really touching, and we are really happy that she made such statement. She said, "It's been such a long time since I felt this happy." Then this is Terry. Um, Terry, after being discharged from a mental health um, facility, so Terry, social worker, suggested he work with Service and Default Ability Links. So after discussions with um, Terry, we found out that he had passion for music, but he didn't really know how to go about it. He loved you know, live performances and studio recording. So we worked together with um, Terry to like, achieve his dream. So Terry is much more happier now, and he's more confident. So we're going to play a video of Terry, how you know, he works with us, and then... Um, so go to the next slide. Okay. Hello, my name is Terry Linden and I'm a singer, songwriter, guitarist. I live in Surrey Hills, Sydney. And for the last few, uh, few months, I've been working with Piri Rutherford on um, getting my album up online and promoting it. Um, and now we're recording four newer songs of mine in the studio here at so it fits into Paul with Vlad and uh, an engineer called James Mudd. Make up your mind and do it quick. Make up your mind and be done with it. I'm gonna call you in. I'm gonna call you in. And here we are in the studio and we're working on uh, one of the new songs I've written called Let Me Color You In. It's been uh, really satisfying because I've pretty much given music away for the last two decades because I'm 55. And um, somebody convinced me that um, there's not much point in doing music at my age. So um, it's been really inspiring for me to, uh, to have a project to work on and also to work in a really good studio for free, working with uh, engineers for free. Uh, yeah, just um, it sort of gives me hope to continue writing songs because I'd sort of given up writing songs as well. Yeah, it's been collaborative with uh, Piri and myself working. He's um, been really good at sort of uh, giving me tips on um, what to do in regards to promotion, sending out emails, making a website, making a Facebook page, um, and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, I would definitely look to, to using the Ruby links again. It's been um, uh, it's given me a lot of inspiration and hope for the future. And it's brought me out of my depression, I would say. I would definitely um, recommend Ability Links to people um, of any creative background, really. Um, and I think it just sort of creates more of a community sense uh, in Sydney, which can be quite isolating, I find. So, um, 
it's it puts people together. Like I've met musicians, I've met um, engineers that I wouldn't have met otherwise. And I've had knowledge about promotion through Puri and how to do artwork and Photoshop. Um, and it's all stuff that's really sort of inspired me um, and um, given me a sense of purpose that I didn't have before. Um, this is Ability Link Metro South. When it comes to Metro South, um, send, we send the Port Society and Settlement Services International. We are working in partnership to cover the whole of Metro South. And there are 64 linkers across the region that include Sydney, Southeastern Sydney, Southwestern Sydney, and Southern Ireland. And under the um, Ability Link Metro South, this is kind of like the map of all our locations. So when you look at it, like Stratfield, Bowood, Canada Bay, these are all the areas that are under uh, Metro South. So if you want to contact us, uh, we can you know, call this service and the folder as well uh, in our number, and then you can email abilitylinks at gmail.com, and that's our website, and that's my mobile number. This is Merida, my colleague. And then for Settlement, settlement Services International, that is their phone number and then their website. Then other providers of um, ability links um, across New South Wales, like I said, St. Vincent de Paul and SSI are covering the Metro South. Then we also have um, St. Vincent de Paul is also covering Hunter Region. Then the Northwest Alliance, that six organizations are covering Northern and Western Sydney. The United Care and SSI are covering Metro South and Southern New South Wales. Then we have um, Aboriginal organizations for 27 identified positions. Then we're also working in partnership with the Family and Community Service Facts. And then just for you to know all about ability links, their location, who and who is providing what, just click on this website and then it gives you the whole um, brief about ability links. So this is another video on inclusion, which we are going to you know, close with because Ability Link is just all about inclusion. That is what, you know, we are mainly into. We are all born included, and inclusion is a mindset. An inclusion mindset recognises we all have the same need for belonging. An inclusion mindset sees difference, like disability, as natural. Whereas rejection, segregation, and integration oppose inclusion. Those who were once born in are pushed out. People with disability get excluded because they are seen as too different, not like us, with nothing to contribute. People who live with disability are also excluded when they can't get there, can't get in and don't feel welcome. Although things are changing, people still report feeling shut out of typical experiences and opportunities within their community. Much is being done to facilitate better inclusion, to bridge the gap of separation and restriction, such as being able to get there and get in, introducing and linking people, laws and protections. These things make inclusion more likely, however, they don't change mindsets. What's needed is a welcoming attitude, welcoming practices, and an inclusive mindset. You see, when people with disability are alongside other ordinary citizens in ordinary places in ordinary roles, it helps to challenge common barriers and misconceptions out there. People are no longer identified as the disabled, but are football fans, good neighbours, filmmakers, employees, travellers, bloggers, hikers, worshippers, dancers. Just one person of many. By caring about people who live with disability, encouraging and valuing every contribution, supporting people who live with disability to occupy valued roles, identifying people who live with disability as equal citizens, and recognising and celebrating that we are better together. 
we can all contribute to an inclusive mindset. That's all about ability links and services. I don't know if you have any questions to ask. Okay. I would like to know if uh, <coughs> do you have any LinkedIn uh, not trust? Yes. Yeah. No. So no. if you just like the the, the, um, web, the link I told you about, you just click there and then put in the postcode of you know where wow. you stay and it just give you the nearest ability links of it. Okay. We could probably send that link to participants. I can circulate the slideshow if you want me to do that. Yeah, you should. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. More questions? Have you, have you encountered any difficulty working with um, people from culturally and linguistic? Diverse background? Of course, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> of course. Um, I've worked with someone that you know preferred an Aboriginal um, linker, so it wasn't he wasn't really connecting with me, and he said that he wanted an Aboriginal linker. That's why I said people have the right to choose the kind of linker they want to work with. A person we can link the person to someone, and then tomorrow he calls. I don't want this link. I don't want to work with Ify anymore. I want another linker. We're not going to feel offended. That's fine. You just have to link the person to another linker. He can still come up and say, I don't like this person. Yeah. So, yeah, it all depends because I know I've experienced that, especially yes. Aboriginal. They want to work with an Aboriginal linker, so we link them to um, an Aboriginal linker. Yeah. But sometimes it works out well. Some people, they don't care. They can work with anyone. Does your organization have funding to provide interpreter service to people from non English speaking? Language? Um, it depends on the, what services it is. Like if we are hosting something, you know, we can pay for that, but not like, you know, one-on-one -on -one, um, service. Like if we are doing any, um, what you call like a workshop or something, then we can pay for interpreting services to come and like interpret. Sorry? They have free service. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the linkers, do most of them speak other languages besides English? Yeah, we have linkers from different backgrounds. We have Chinese, African, Indian, you know, we have people from different cultural backgrounds. So it depends on what the person wants. We tend to link, you know, like SSI mainly, you know, that is where you find uh, most, like for, for the Chinese, Asian, that's SSI. So if somebody is really insisting on working with, you know, that culture, then we link them to that. We also have Aboriginal linkers covering certain areas. If the person insists that if we want to work with Aboriginal, then we link. So we just try to, you know, fit into whatever the person wants. So we have different linkers from different cultural backgrounds. I'm just running the role of linkers is sometimes is empowering people to gain knowledge and perhaps linkers can assist people in in accessing things such as the recovery colleges that are available or other services yes. that they might be aware of as well. Yeah, sure. Well, if, if the person who is linked with you is not proactive, are you guys being proactive to find like someone on medication? You know, it's like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm like normally it's for three months. But it can go beyond that. So we don't like we don't rush people. Like so it's a gradual process. We try to build a rapport, you know, just try different ways to make the person engage. Mm. Yeah. So it's uh, so uh, ability links has got a, a large staff which is quite diverse mm -hmm. yeah. and can cover most requests for different uh, sorts of peers to support people. And um, that is a good question though, particularly from a carer's perspective. If a person could benefit, but is perhaps ambivalent about the idea of connecting with ability links. Um, can you work with them to yeah. try and build some um, buy-in and consent? Yeah, that's because what I found that I was constantly having to do the ringing. Then I don't want to have to. I don't want to be interfering. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's why we have you have to build a rapport. Don't just come with your linking or service, whatever. Come up, you know, probably as a friend. Talk about something else. You know, and then you guys can go to a coffee shop, discuss, walk to the park, 
talk about just different things. No, in, what I mean is being proactive in trying to keep the connection. So sometimes it can be difficult if a person um, you know, is uh, experiencing symptoms and is um, sort of turned in a bit and is not so open to engaging with to the engage. other Then the other um, we just have to let the person be. We don't force the person to engage. We don't force people. The person is compliant, mm -hmm. but it's waiting for a phone call. Because they not, for them to pick up a phone is like picking up a barbell. You know what I mean? Oh. Yeah. There's, I think there's um, a, a person, I suppose, has to be ready to yeah, be open exactly. to at least uh, yeah, meeting exactly, with yeah. someone. Um, and that is a, a difficult question that compliant. carers often encounter. Um, that we're getting a person to a point where they want to start the first steps. We've also had project. people that also have carers. For such people, they may have a carer. Like if this person is finding it difficult picking up the phone or whatever, so we have the carer there that is also part of the service, so there are some areas that the carer will have to come in and there are areas that we have to come in. So in that area, that's not our job. I think it's the job of the carer to like, you know, um, ensure that probably the piece of the phone or, uh, yeah, so there are times that we also work together with carers, as in ability is carers are working together too, you know. So you can work with the, the family to yes. help build yeah, that sure. engagement. Mm -hmm. So that's important, but it's also important yeah. that to re remember that when we do put as much um, of the control of what happens into the hands of the person who's experiencing the mm, mental health exactly, issue, yeah. that does create some extra um, difficulties sometimes in starting processes going. And it's great that we've got services like Ability Links that can work with, um, with the family and the person yeah. to build yeah. that sort of engagement. But it's also um, important to um, recognise that uh, <coughs> ability, um, if we don't get the person to want to participate, then ultimately the service won't succeed either. So. Yeah, because we don't force people to engage. We don't force people. No, no, I think my question is understanding that how proactive you are if someone is in that situation. But he is compliant, he is compliant. But cannot pick up the phone, for example. No, no, but the other side is not being proactive. Trying to engage. Do you mean the uh, person who's experiencing the illness or other services? Other yeah. Other so services. I then someone else said to me, you need to bring them and put pressure on them and try and get them. And I'm like, I don't want to be. Yeah, that's, that's why we are different. You're on side, you're kind of like, you know, <coughs> pressurizing. We, to ring. we don't like pressurize. What if one of us, do you want to ring us? Do you mind ringing us? It's like all about the person. The way we work is person led. The person is like the boss. We don't say you have to ring us by this time. We say, would you like to ring us? Will it be okay for you to ring us by this time? And the person will say yes or no. But yours is like, you're kind of like in power, like you have to ring. We don't work like that. The person is the boss, you know, yeah. So I'm sure that's the sort of thing that could be sorted out for a longer engagement. But uh, was there a question at the back? Um, just, does it, is there much of a wait? Like once someone is ready to wait list? On list contact yeah. you? No, 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 we don't have any wait list. The person is free to come, walk into our office. There's no wait list. No. So you've got the blinkers available? Yeah, so once you come, you just give us like, it depends on how you come to us. As we you called or send us an email, you have to give us three working days and a linker will surely give you a ring and then you start off. Yeah. How do you recruit your linkers? Um, most times we have like uh, adverts. They can publish it on C and then people will apply. Like for over three, four months, we have been advertising for linkers on C for different locations. So we just keep checking seek.com and our ability to visit the poor website Click on carers. There are so many um, adverts on LinkedIn. Questions along the same lines of employment. Do you have uh, any sort of like graduation program for linkers that have been linked and, or sorry, participants within the program that have accessed a link? Um, is there kind of a an ongoing program to keep them engaged and perhaps they can become linkers? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we have some of them working for us, you know, like we have um, employed some, you know, some that work that are um, 
have success stories and then ended up becoming our staff. So at NART now, we are also employing, we are trying to employ um, people with disability. They are called access linkers. So the adverts, I think, is it on or no? Are they Not trying? yet. No. Not yet. We are going to yet. place that for, that's access linkers, people that will help with the um, accessibility. We are kind of trying to make um, the community more accessible. <coughs> so these are linkers that will go out there, find out what is wrong in, you know, probably a coffee shop or whatever. This is the area that, you know, needs adjustment so we are, they are called access linkers so this is mainly for people with disability so the advert will be up anytime from now on um, Venus website so if you have anybody with disability that would like to work then they can apply and those peer workers can be very good at enhancing access yeah. and engaging with people i think we have one last question over this side i haven't um, got a question i actually just work with um at countdown so just, um, I'm just going to answer a question of somebody who's been helping some people. Um, most of the people do um, recruit in the communities who all come from so many different backgrounds, a lot of people from the media, come from a big background, and then it's a community source. So we all have lots of different backgrounds. And we also work in different services as well. So we, um, once you come with us, because we have the third days as well. So what we mainly do is we try and move into a service so we don't have to like we don't have just us, but you know we, we try and move to a service straight away that we need to especially people help. So we know we partner with services like one door and um, yeah so that's the answer to the question. Thank you. Thank you. Provides a great service in helping to link people to other services, which is a job that carers often wind up having to do. Yeah. So I think that that could be a, a tremendous uh, supplement. You just call if you have like a confusion or whatever. Just give us a ring. You have somebody that wants to do this, do this. Then we can, you know, respond to you and say, okay, come to our office or whatever. Just feel free to call and ask any question. Well, uh, I'd like to um, thank Ify for that excellent presentation.